Well, welcome to your four to five and happy Monday. Yeah. I am Sydney Moore alongside Tanya Rivera. Yeah. Hello. And yeah. then there's Mr. Eric Chilton We're right all there. Here. That's <laughs> right. We're doing things just a little bit different yeah. um, this Monday, this half hour due to some developing news. So we're going to get a look at your forecast and we're going to get let Eric take it away in just a few moments. But first, we're going to begin with this because our four to five has a tragic story out of Rockingham County that you need to know about. You see, Eden police say Gwendolyn Riddick, a well-known doctor in the area, was killed by the father of her child. Investigators say John Powell shot Riddick several times, and this was very public. It was in the parking lot at Freedom Park. That's right, police caught Powell as she, he was driving away from the scene. Officials say Riddick was taken to the hospital where she died from her injuries. Now, Dr. Riddick was an OBGYN at UNC Health and Rockingham County, so a lot of people know her, mm -hmm. know her name. WFMY News 2's Hannah Jeffrey spoke to a couple of her patients. That's right, yes, Tanya Sydney. I have been scrolling through social media comments and shares all day long from both patients and coworkers, and it's just very just clear to see how loved Dr. Riddick really was here, and her patients are all mourning her loss at this point. I spoke to Mackenzie Denson. She is an expecting mother, and she was supposed to have an appointment next week with Dr. Riddick, and it was an important one. It was her 20-week appointment. When you were pregnant, you know, that's the big ultrasound. You, that's the big anatomy scan. You get to see any and everything about the baby, and it's a very detailed appointment. So I was looking forward to just talking with her, sharing any cares, concerns I had. You know, just her telling me, you know, everything was great, so on and so forth, and just the great relationship she's built with me throughout my pregnancy so far. So she's just, you know, it's sad because I was looking forward to my husband also meeting her too next week because he hasn't gotten to, and I know he would have loved her. Denson says Women's Health called her this morning to let her know that she would have a different doctor for the rest of her pregnancy. And the UNC system also re released a statement that said they are mourning her loss and they are saddened by her loss and that they will continue to support Riddick's patients and her coworkers. For now, live in Eden, I'm Hannah Jeffries, WFMY News 2. Right now, investigators believe the shooting stemmed from a domestic incident between Riddick and Powell, who have a child together. Police charged Powell with first degree murder and discharging a weapon into an occupied property. He is being held with no bond and he's expected to make his first appearance in court next week. Let's get to your four to five roundup. A Winston-Salem road is back open this afternoon after a gas main break this morning. Businesses had to be evacuated near Stratford Road due to the smell. Fire crews say a company was doing directional drilling and accidentally clipped a gas line for Windsor Jewelers. Workers at the Honda facility in Swepsonville will be working on more than just cars. Earlier this month, factory leaders confirmed the plant will include ATV production. The Alamance County facility now joins Honda's South Carolina plant as the only two who are building all-terrain vehicles. Prior to the announcement, the NC Honda plant only manufactured products like snowblowers, lawnmowers, and generators. We're learning new details about the relocation of students in Winston-Salem for Scythe County Schools. This morning, the district approved an 18-month lease for the St. Peter's World Outreach Building. Earlier this summer, the school board voted to move students at Philo Middle School to the Main Street Academy and then those academy students to the World Outreach Building. The relocations were made to work with construction for the district's bond projects. All right, for the first time in 50 years, the Alamance Burlington School System is opening a new school. The new school covers more than 200,000 square feet, costs $65 million to build. Today, we got to look inside. Our students and staff are going to make what's, what makes this place really great. And so, you know, my thing is, is like we've got an opportunity, but we, we then, you know, have been given this. We need to create a great environment for our students. The school sits on 96 acres off of NC Highway 119. Southeast Alamance High School will have the capacity for more than 1,200 students when it officially opens next month. Now, it's going to be an exciting time for many students as they either start high school or return to high school in a brand new building. This is what uh, Blanca Cobb, who has a master's degree in psychology, and I are talking about today. So let's get to it because a whole lot of changes and all that other kind of stuff. Why might a new school building be a little unsettling for returning students? 
Well, for some students, change is really different, and you get used to how things used to be. For example, there, maybe there's certain hangout locations in the old building that they really like, or certain classes in certain locations, or the layout of the school. And so any type of change can be a little daunting. And then also, memories can be tied to what has existed for so long. And so that can be a difference as well. Yeah, and so familiarity really plays in a uh, transition, especially as we're going from one like big step to the next step. Absolutely, because there's a lot of comfort in that familiarity. That's why change can be can be hard. So even if, there, if something is newer or better, a lot of people will still gravitate toward what used to be or the old thing because it's still very familiar and there's a lot of comfort and familiarity. All right, so how do we then help our students adjust to a new space, new ways of getting around and that kind of thing? It's really giving them opportunities to become familiar. Tours, I'm sure tours will be something that the school offers, but then also time to explore and just have fun and look around before it's all academics. And then explain, even though there's some changes and things look new, here are some similarities, and this is why we're making these changes, and here are some things that we're trying to keep, keep consistent from the old high school. And that those explanations tend to fill in the, the gaps in what students are thinking. All right, well, maybe you're one of those parents out there who's got a kid who's going to be going to the new school. So you know what? You can continue the conversation with Blanca on her Facebook page. She's got other tips and tricks as well. Blanca Cobb, body language expert. You know, temperature is still a little bit on the warm side, but not as bad, right? I mean, we were in the mid 90s for a couple of days last week and into the first part of the weekend. I'll take this any day over that. Now, one thing you're going to notice, look at Walnut Cove and Reedsville temperatures at 80. And meanwhile, just a hop, skip and a jump down Highway 29 from Reedsville, you go into Greensboro, it's 87, seven degree difference. That's because we've seen a couple of showers in some of our northern counties. Here's what it looks like now. And yeah, that's where the rain pushing through the Reedsville area and kind of approaching Summerfield, although it is it's weakening a little bit, but that's right along 220 or I-73 there from Summerfield heading north. That shower is moving south and east. So Summerfield, northern parts of Guilford County, get ready for that in the next 15 or 20. Let's look and see if we're seeing any watches and warnings, nothing. This is live streaming data, so if it were to happen, you'll see it in real time. Most of this has been in our northwest areas and not really making it too far to the east, but this time of the year with this kind of heat, you really can't rule out an isolated shower or pop-up thunderstorm. That's normal, right? That's summer in North Carolina in this part of the world. So uh, cold front moving through, uh, lower humidity, and it looks nice for the next several days. On the backside, of that if you head all the way back out west just scorching temperatures again and uh, for right now that high pressure will hold that at bay it just remains to be seen how long that will happen let's look at our long range forecast for you and you're looking at mid 80s for tuesday wednesday and rain chances are diminished that is a 20 percent chance bring it up to a 30 percent and hold that for thursday friday 40 percent saturday sunday but all of those are normal late day pop-up storms our highs mostly in the low to mid 80s for the majority of the week all right, Eric, thank you. Check out what we caught on camera last night. Brad, our director for the four to five, sent us this video of his parents home at Blowing Rock. If you look closely, you can see a bear trespassing on their deck. He walks up and even looks over the balcony like he pretty much owns the place <laughs> before walking off. Now, this wasn't the first bear they saw on the property. Actually, a couple years back, they caught this one stealing from a bird feeder mm -hmm. and the bear just pulled it down and just kept I'm it just going. I'm just going to take this with me. You know. That's what he's pulling it because uh, Brad told me that his dad had that bird feeder on a pulley system, oh, so he could bring it he? down. So he's pulling on oh, this no. string on that mm -hmm. one. Wow, cable. I've never seen a bear in person, and and I'm and I'm happy about that, yeah. honestly. <laughs> well, and I, you know I when I watched that video, you know it's a big animal, it right? Is. And it's not like a graceful animal, right? And yet he kind of like goes like along, and he doesn't like touch any of the other furniture. Yeah. He doesn't knock anything down. He's just kind of like, not, hey, let me look over the balcony. It's the interesting that he knew to 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 pull that though as well, well too. I, think I mean, he right? The food in it, so he's just and trying he to get, get it, it out. Done. Yeah. But this is also that's a second story level. So he had to climb so stairs. He had to climb something to get up Ooh, there. Oh, they're smart. Mm -hmm. Have you seen a bear in person? Interesting. Not in the wild, but at a zoo, of course. At a zoo. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. That's it. Thank yeah. goodness. I'm yeah. good with that. That's yeah, enough. I'm good with seeing one in person. Don't know what I would yeah. do. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. All right. Well, before we head over to the break, 
Paul Rubens, the actor best known as Pee Wee Herman, died last night after a long cancer battle. He gained fame in the 1980s with his Pee Wee Herman movies and TV shows. His family posted, Paul bravely and privately fought cancer for years with his trademark tenacity and wit. He will forever live in the comedy of Pantheon and in our hearts. He was 70 years old. We'll be right back. You know, it's fast becoming one of the biggest events in downtown Winston-Salem. The Gears and Guitars event combines rock music and professional cycle racing all through the streets of downtown Winston-Salem for multiple days. I spoke with event director Ray Bowden to get the scoop. Ray, this is crazy. I mean, you guys started developing this 10 years ago. It looks nothing like it did in the beginning. Talk about the history of this. Well, when we, when we started the Winston-Salem Cycling Classic, we started with one day on Trade Street. Um, and then it has grown exponentially. Certainly, we did music then, but then we added six or seven nights of music when we did the USA Cycling National Championship uh, the year that it was here. And I said, well, if we're going to do music every night, this becomes something different. We created the Gears of Guitars brand to go with this. and. And then we went on to UCI road races, and now we street sprint and multiple stage locations. So for people that haven't been, I mean, they're missing out, describe the experience. If you, even if you're not familiar with the cycling part and you love the bands, or if you're a cycling fan and you come to see the music, it's, it's uh, a fever pitch excitement, I think, because if you're looking at world-class cyclists and it's just excitement. The bikes are ripping through every couple of minutes. There's great rock and roll or bluegrass or mix that up through the years. This year's pretty 90s rock heavy, but we just wanted to have a big party. It's this 10th anniversary thing and bring bands that people know the song, and know the words, and you know, just have a good time. 
So if we were to look, Ray, 10 years from now, what do you want this to look like? Oh, wow. So uh, we're looking at 2033, Peter's Guitars, Winston-Salem, Sonic and Classic. Uh, we want it to be here in Winston-Salem, obviously. We have to change the name. But uh, it's a legacy event. We, we built it to be a legacy event. Uh, our benchmark of what we try to go for is the Athens Twilight Criterion in Athens, Georgia. And it's been there 44 or 45 years. So that's our, that's our goal is for this thing to be here for decades and decades. It's the 10 year, the first 10 years have flown by. Ray, thanks for taking time out of your busy sky. I know you're slammed right now. Good luck with this event. So I'm asking mm. Tanya to bail me out because I forgot my <laughs> phone. Um, th this year, the bands are mostly 90s rock. He's decided, they decided to do a theme mm. this year. I know Dishwala is one of them. She's okay. looking them up. I'm looking them Because I forgot, but they're, they were big names, either had a hit or two, um, but the lineup is pretty big. And you don't have to be a cycling enthusiast. I was about to ask, yes. that was my question. It, it's just interesting. So I've seen, I've never <laughs> been to the cycling part. I've mm -hmm. seen the concert. But um, they fly by, and you don't understand how fast they're going into. And it's through the streets of Winston Salem, um, so it's pretty cool to watch, even if you don't know anything about cycling. Yeah, yeah, I've I've been fortunate to see some videos of folks do, yes. doing some cycling, and gosh, I mean the strength and and just the 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 energy they're that so they have to get there so close other. together. Yep. I don't know how they can do that. It seems so interesting mm -hmm. though. Definitely does. You find it? <laughs> Wafer Thin, The Hollow Rockets, oh. and Dead Drag Moon. Okay, so those are the local bands. So, oh, okay. So if you're into local music, they mm -hmm. do that on one of the days. I think, I can't remember, okay. I think that's Sunday. Okay. And then the other bands were like, I know Dishwalla was one of them. And I swear it's on the Oh, it is Dishwalla Soul Asylum. Soul Asylum. Yep. yep. Mm -hmm. So what you're saying is folks need to get out there. Uh, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> don't miss it. Yes, do not miss that. We'll be back. We like these temperatures and they will get better over the next few days too. Now just keep in mind we it's summer, right? So we have at least a 20 or 30% chance of a late day pop up shower pretty much every day in the forecast, but that's what we have this time of the year. You know, it's good. We call it the, it's the Wyndham dance because every year at this time, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, we're watching those late day pop up storms. Um, 87 degrees in Greensboro right now. Burlington, you're at 88 high point up to 90. It's 86 in Ashboro. All of these better than those 94, 95s we were seeing for a while. 
um, decent temperatures. Couple of showers, yes, are they widespread? No, but we're watching this one cell. That has diminished in strength, but it's moving through Summerfield right now, headed down to other places in northern Guilford County, and that is all drifting down to the southeast. Just a quick check of our live streaming data here. No watches or warnings to talk about. Um, zooming back out to the wide shot, you do see a couple of more showers trying to make their way over the mountains, but just know um, from a weather standpoint, a lot of times when showers come from the other side of the mountains, they tend to rain themselves out before they get on the east side of the mountain. So some of that probably won't even make it to the triad, but a chance of an isolated shower. Yeah, we've got that pretty much every day, right? It's a 20% for Tuesday and Wednesday, mid 80s for highs. The coolest days, I tell you, Thursday, Friday is wonderful. 83 degrees, only a 30% chance of a late day storm. We'll go to a 40% still. That's within normal range for our weekend. Wyndham looks good. 85 Saturday, 87 Sunday, and we'll top out the hottest day for the week is next Monday at 88. A good game of pickleball is coming to the triad. The USA Pickleball August Classic is coming to High Point this weekend. The one day tournament will be held at the Oakview Recreation Center on James Road. The champion could win up to $175. Registration for the tournament closes on Thursday. Anyone 13 and older can sign up whether you have a team or you need a partner. All right, so over the weekend, the American Pickleball Tour stopped in Columbia, South Carolina. Peyton Lewis introduces us to one of the youngest competitors helping grow the sport's popularity. The world's fastest growing sport has made its way to the famously hot city and has been attracting kids from 8 to 82 to play. What a point! Good try, guys. Good try. Ella Evans has been playing pickleball for a year now and says she loves the sport. It's good for working out. It's really fun to play. 
and it gets really addicting and then you start playing every single day. At only eight years old, she's constantly meeting people from different courts, some even bouncing from across the state to enjoy the game. We live in Bluffton. So how far did you guys drive to be here? Two hours. Two hours. Gina Resch and Matt Halfin won silver at Saturday's tournament, but others attending weren't going for medals. I'm not playing today. I'm actually watching two people that I give lessons to. Uh, they're over on court. Three, but I just came to support them. The American Pickleball Tour brought close to 250 spectators and players to Columbia with hopes to continue growing. We've been working with Experience Columbia to bring the American Pickleball Tour here for over three years and this is so exciting to finally be able to land our tournament. One thing about pickleball is that we have such a diversity of players and age groups. Here at the American Pickleball Tour we make sure to put everyone with the same person of their skill and their age. So that way everyone's having a good time, nobody's getting blown out and it's really competitive, fun play. Oh, I want to play pickleball, pickle, pickleball, <laughs> oh gosh, um, so bad, but I need to find the time to get too. out there and do it and maybe I can find someone to give me some lessons. There's, they, they, I've heard this by the people in Greensboro that make big decisions have said that they can't keep up with, there aren't enough courts. Everybody, uh -huh. everybody yeah. wants to play. I can see mm -hmm. that for sure. It's Tell us what you did person. yesterday. So did you play? I, no, I went <laughs> oh. to, I, I'm dying to play. Okay, okay. I went to dinner with some friends. I took them for a favor they did for me, and we look up on the I think it was ESPN, um, and they were running pickleball tournaments. Like wow. now, now it's that big. Wow. Of course, just in our general conversation, I'm like, oh, what'd you do yesterday? He goes, you know, I watched pickleball on ESPN. That's how the conversation started. It wasn't, oh, I took someone to lunch. It was just, oh, you know, I was I just watching pickleball. pickleball. Well, it used to be, <laughs> like it. It used to be like <laughs> retirement communities, not the case anymore. Uh -huh. Yeah, no. I mean, you saw the eight-year-old yeah. girl from Columbia. I mean, she says she started doing it for a little bit, and now she says it's addicting, and I, yes. she does it every day. And she's right. competing against older folks out there, so it's pretty Chris cool. Chris Kelly from Rock 92 tells me, because he's obsessed with it, and he told me, he goes, once you start playing it, you realize it's not easy, and it's really physically challenged, even though it's a smaller mm. court. So. And you get obsessed with it. Yeah, you tell your husband I'm playing with him. Okay. He, won't, <laughs> he's he got, got those things for Father's Day, so he's got to learn how to play. Who are you going to go for? Who am I going to go for? Yeah, you said, Eric said he's going to go, try to go against your No, 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 I want to play should. with him. He needs to play with my husband. Okay, yeah, okay, he, okay. He's got the pickleball things. He's he got, got it for Father's Day. Oh, I'm like, all right, you got to get out there and do something with that. That's right. I have nothing, but I can use it. All right, we'll be back.
Hi there, welcome back to the Four to Five. Eric Chilton, Tammy Rivera, Cindy Moore. Mm -hmm. Here today on this Monday. Yeah, Hello. Monday afternoon. How you feeling? Does it feel like Pretty a Monday good. for you all? No, but it feels like a really cool, interesting week because we, there's so much stuff that's going on. Yes. That's right. Right, mm -hmm. Panthers wise, Wyndham wise, the whole spiel, right? So yeah. let's get to it this uh, half hour. It is Wyndham week in Greensboro. The PGA Championship golf event returns to Sedgefield Country Club on Wednesday. Today, Wyndham officials announced a major investment back into the Greensboro community. Wyndham mm -hmm. says it started the process of creating a mural honoring the Greensboro Six at Gillespie Golf Course. If you don't know the Greensboro Six, they were a group of African-American golfers who helped integrate Gillespie Golf Course in the 50s. Their case went all the way to the U.S. Supreme Court before the course was fully integrated in 1962. Today, the golf course is open to everyone in the heart of Greensboro. All of us at Wyndham, we heard this story and we thought, why don't more people know about it? And we toured the course and we looked at that white wall behind us all and thought, maybe there's more we can do. Maybe there's more we can do to use the Wyndham Championship as a platform to not only tell the story of the Greensboro Six here in Greensboro, but on a national and international scale. And so today, we're very proud to announce that Wyndham Rewards will be commissioning a mural celebrating the Greensboro Six and their impact on history, not only to this community, but to our nation and to the game of golf. And our intention is that at next year's championship, we will unveil that mural. Super cool. This week, many of the PGA Tour's top players will be making the trip to the triad, of course. The Greensboro Sports Foundation says the Wyndham brought in, get this, $30 million for the city last year. That is more than the men's and ACC women's uh, tournaments, plus the first two rounds of March Madness combined. Wow. Mm -hmm. The Wyndham Championship can lay claim to something no other annual tournament on tour can say being a Donald Ross design course. Right. The famous golf course architect lent his talents to Sedgefield Country Club back in 1926. Now Ross has designed many courses around the nation, including Pinehurst number no. two, Oak Hill, Inverness Club and Oakland Hills. We talked with Sedgefield Director of Golf Eric Ferguson and Tournament Director Bobby Powell about the impact of players playing a Ross style course. I honestly think it's just uh, you know seeing it once a year that we don't typically get to see uh, a Donna Ross um, stop on tour except you know once a year and I think uh, you know guys are intrigued and they know what Donna Ross characteristics of golf courses are and they just they just love to be here for it. These Bermuda greens are so fantastic. Chad and his staff do such a great job here. We're, we're very fortunate to have him and, and we're fortunate that the golf course this time of year um, really shines. And, and yes, those greens are something that uh, definitely resonates with the players. Players always want to play great golf courses. We've talked about this before. They don't get a chance to play Donald Ross courses on a weekly basis. It's a treat for them to do that. And, and it's a different type of golf course than what they're typically seeing. So there's, there's so much more character and, and shot making involved. And, and uh, you know, if you think about it, there's a premium on hitting the ball in the fairway because the rough is so nasty, so gnarly by the time we get to uh, that first week of August. So it'll be interesting to see. Well, unlike playing at number two down, down at Pinehurst, these greens are more uh, undulating with not saucers, but just runoff areas. So when, when you see a guy you know, struggle out here, it's because he's missing in the wrong spot. And as we always tell our, our, our members or guests that you don't want to miss uh, on the short side or you don't want to be long. So if you can avoid those things and you know, play short of the hole locations, then you're going to come out pretty good. I like that he's giving a few like tricks and tips, right? If you ever do get to play, play that. Or yeah. when you're watching it, where they're going to make their mistake. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, it's pretty cool to, to hear the, about him designing that, that course. And I believe he's designed, I think, around f about 400 courses. Gosh. So uh, really just a lot. But there's I'm a golfer myself. I love the game of golf. Mm -hmm. There's a lot that goes into, I bet, designing these oh, courses yeah. from the different hills, how uh, wide and, and, and um, you know narrow. narrow you would like the courses mm -hmm. to be. This sand traps, all these different things. So just kind of like you said, with someone giving tips of how to play, you might want to listen That's into right. it. Because <laughs> it can, it can, those courses can be tough. Yeah, Donald Ross <laughs> took his entire life savings to come from Scotland to the United States in like the late 1800s. Um, and they said when he got off the boat, he literally had two bucks. And he got a job and then little by little, he ended up being the golf pro at Pinehurst and, and mm. you know, is probably the most famous designer of all. Right, and being the name that everybody wants to play one of his courses. Yes, that's right. Pretty cool. Two bucks in his pocket. Legendary.
Let's Pretty cool. Mm -hmm. All right, hey, looking around the first round of the Wyndham Championship, of course, teeing off Thursday at the Sedgefield Country Club. If you can't make it out to the Wyndham, we have you covered right here on WFMY News 2. You can watch third and final round play from the Triads Tour event both Saturday and Sunday right here. Our coverage runs from three to six both of the days. So excited, my favorite week of the year here outside of March Madness. It's my, it's my number two. Um, here's what we see, 87 in Greensboro, 88 in Burlington, um, 82 for Walnut Cove. Mount Airy's at 85 in the higher elevations, Galax and Jefferson and Boone were in the 70s there. A couple of showers had worked their way through. We still see a little bit, especially in our northwest communities. You can see um, in Wilkes County, Allegheny, Ashwatauga, a few showers. That's kept their temperatures down. Um, and cooled us off in northern Guilford County, too. That one moved through Summerfield. You see at the bottom of your screen there. Now it's right at the 840 loop at the northernmost part of our uh, 840 loop and that will be moving through and probably losing a little bit of steam honestly over the next 30 minutes or so uh, out to the wide shot and you can see m more of this but just not a lot we're not expecting today was one of those 20 to 25 percent chance of a shower it's not a great chance you're lucky if you see one we did have some this morning though didn't we heavy at times and uh, that went through pretty quickly and we cleared out seven day forecast looks nice it's typical summertime stuff for us mid 80s 20% chance that's slightly reduced for a normal summertime late day shower, but that's Wednesday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, low 80s and 30% beautiful first two days of the Wyndham. Even Saturday, Sunday is nice. We might bring up a couple degrees here, but 85, 87 for Saturday, Sunday and a 40% chance of a late day pop up shower storm. Warmest day of the next seven next Monday at 88. The property manager of Donald Trump's Mar-a-Lago estate made his first court appearance today. In the classified documents case against the former president, Christian Benavides was in the Miami courtroom during the hearing. Carlos de Oliveira faces charges including conspiracy to obstruct justice and lying to investigators. He did not answer questions before or after the brief hearing Monday morning in Miami. Prosecutors say de Oliveira conspired with Trump and Trump aide Walt Nauta to try to delete security footage while investigators were looking into the former president's handling of classified documents. The Justice Department has unfortunately decided to bring these charges against Mr. De Oliveira. Keep moving. 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 The judge read the charges against the Oliveira, but he did not enter a plea because he does not yet have a Florida based attorney. Former President Trump, who faces new charges in this case, but has already pleaded not guilty to 37 counts, says the tapes were not deleted, quote, in any way, shape, or form. Christian Benavides, CBS News, Miami. The judge ordered the defendant to turn over his passport and sign an agreement to pay $100,000 if he doesn't appear in court. Arrangement is scheduled for August 10th in Fort Pierce, Florida. Let's get to your four to five roundup. An Idaho mother is sentenced to multiple life sentences for murdering her children. In May, Lori Vallow Daybell was convicted of killing her 16 and seven year old children and then conspiring to kill the first wife of her husband, Chad Daybell. The children's remains were found on Chad Daybell's property in 2020, nine months after they had disappeared. Prosecutors say that the Daybells used end of times beliefs, including talk of zombies, to justify the crimes. Vallow Daybell will spend the rest of her life behind bars without the possibility of parole. As the summer heat strains air conditioners across the country, researchers say one in four Americans are uncertain about being able to pay their energy bills and they could have their electricity cut off if they are overdue. Experts say just 19 states restrict summer shutoffs by utilities. Last year, utilities cut power to about 3 million households. Here at home, North Carolina utility companies cannot disconnect service to households during the colder months. This protects someone who is disabled or older than 65, people who are unable to pay their bills under an installment plan, and someone who is certified by a local social service agency as eligible to receive assistance under an energy assistance program. Ford is recalling its top selling F-150. There's more than 870,000 pickup trucks that are impacted this from this recall. Model years 2021 through 2023. Ford says the electronic parking brake can activate while you're driving. The automaker is not aware, they say, of any accidents or injuries related to the problem. Tobacco use is declining in North Carolina, according to new data from the State Health Department. 
North Carolina is showing the lowest rate of tobacco use in more than a decade for people who struggle with their mental health or heavy drinking. Officials say the percentage of behavioral health programs providing tobacco use screening and treatment to clients increased by more than 60% um, in 2016. So as efforts to stop tobacco use have been seeing some success, the United Nations is pointing out there is still a long way to go. A new report from the World Health Organization found there are 1.3 billion tobacco users around the world. That's about one in every five people. Around 80% of them live in low and middle income countries and tobacco kills up to half of its use users. The WHO says the fight to end tobacco use hasn't been easy. The tobacco industry is a powerful and resourceful industry, which even today continues to grow in terms of profit and influence. The WHO credits programs like anti-tobacco efforts, highlighting the risk of smoking, helping people quit and raising taxes on tobacco. The WHO says roughly 70% of the world's population is now protected by at least one of these measures. I can remember when I moved here 20 something years ago, you would be able to go into a restaurant or a convenience store or even the city hall town meeting. Yes. And there were um, cigarette ashtrays mm -hmm. there for you to mm -hmm. use during the meetings and stuff like that. And I had never seen that before from where wow. I came from. And then within like what, five, seven years, it was gone. gone. In the 90s, mm -hmm. I think is when I remember people would smoke. I've never been a smoker, but I remember people would smoke in bars and restaurants freely. Mm -hmm. But And it cracks me up smoking section, non-smoking section, right. but they're side by side. By side. There mm -hmm. is no such thing as a non-smoking section inside a building. Yeah, um, I remember doing a story of a woman who kind of struggled with, with smoking and she talked about just how difficult, of course, it is yeah. to stop. Mm -hmm. And there was a doctor there talking about that there are great <laughs> methods and resources out there that folks should look into it if they find themselves, uh, you know, having a hard time to sure. stop. And it was a jar method. I, I don't want to repeat exactly kind of what it is because I, I don't want to, you know, say anything wrong. Wrong, but it was basically a graceful way each day to let go of one cigarette at a time because mm -hmm. she told me it's tough to just call turkey. Just, you oh, know yeah. what I mean? Oh, yeah. So yeah. it was a nice way to ease off of it, but resources are, are really important. I, well, everybody in my family except me smoked at some point, and I remember, and they all quit over time. Hmm. But you got you to do it if you can, if you can help hmm. it. Not yeah. All right, we'll be back.
Welcome back. Former President Donald Trump held a rally this weekend as his legal problems continue to mount. Campaigning in Pennsylvania over the weekend, the Republican frontrunner pushed back hard against the latest charges against him in the classified documents case out on the trial. Republican presidential candidates are treading lightly when it comes to former President Donald Trump's legal woes. Uh, we need to be focusing on using our energy and resources on defeating Biden and the Democrats. We can't keep living with indictments and court cases and vengeance of the past. We've got to start going forward. As for the Democrats front runner for the Oval Office, President Biden is enjoying his summer break in Delaware. This morning, Biden and the First Lady were spotted biking. He did not speak to the press. Well, experts say that Joe Biden and Donald Trump's age should not affect their ability to run the country. But really, it is a topic that comes up often. So let's connect the dots. The two men already have demanding schedules, whether they're in or out of the office. And their physicians say both men partake in healthy habits like avoiding smoking and excessive drinking. However, many voters still have concerns. A Washington Post poll found only a third of Americans believe that Biden is mentally sharp enough to hold office, and about half of Americans believe Trump is mentally capable of being president. For experts to analyze the two competitors on their longevity after the 2024 election, all of them agree that the two could retain their physical and mental abilities all the way up to 2029, as long as neither of them face serious injury or illness. And that is connecting the dots. I posed this question on Facebook about should we have age restrictions for those who run for office? You know, we have age restrictions for all kinds of things, right? You can get your driver's license at a certain age. Mm -hmm. You can only get married if you're a certain age. You can only drink if you're a certain age or vote if you're a certain age, that kind of stuff. Um, there are some jobs that require you to retire at, certain, at a certain age, mm -hmm. like pilots, pilots, for example, yeah. right? You have to retire at a certain age. Um, but this, I mean, it's kind of like, you're like, all right, should should there be an age limit here? That's like saying, should there be an age limit for a teacher? Should there be an evaluation maybe? Like when you go do your driver's license and they do the, you know, the sight test and they do the sign test. Right. Should there be something like that? I don't know. I feel like there needs to be something because everybody's different. And at some point, all of us will have cognitive issues, you know, yeah. I mean, that's just kind of the way it is. And they may not be major, but when you're president of the United States, you can't afford any mistakes, you, you know. Some, some important and tough d decisions to make as well, too. Yeah, I, I imagine if you exactly kind of like you said with the cognitive issues, if they, you know, continue to evolve yeah. d down the line, then, mm -hmm. then, then, you know. Some sort of assessment. I don't know. Yeah, what everybody kind of said yes, but they didn't really say yeah, what, what I think it right. should be. And, right. and I think that's hard, right? It's hard to determine what that's it should true. be. But we can talk about it some more on Facebook. <laughs>
Here's some things to think about before you go. The latest box office numbers show the Barbie movie is still breaking records in its second week in theaters. Deadline reports that the movie helped the box office reach its highest grossing final weekend in July ever. Barbie is already the third highest grossing film of the year behind Super Mario Brothers and Guardians of the Galaxy, ranking in $774 million worldwide. Well, soon you're going to be able to purchase LED lights uh, from retailers across the nation. That's right, an official ban on incandescent light bulbs goes into effect tomorrow. Remember, we've been talking about this for like a decade. Really, we have. While it won't be illegal to own the incandescent light bulbs, it will be illegal for stores to sell them and companies to manufacture them. Federal officials say this will help Americans save money and help the environment. Womp, womp. <laughs> Well, Olympic star swimmer Katie Ledecky is now the record holder for most individual world swimming titles, passing none other than Michael Phelps. Ledecky now has 16 world titles after winning the 800 meter freestyle at the World Championships in Japan over the weekend. The, late, the last time Katie Ledecky lost a race in the 800 meter freestyle was more than 13 years ago, back when she was only 13 years old. It's incredible. 13 years old. So wait, let me back up with the light bulb thing here. Maybe Tanya, I don't know. Mm -hmm. Does that mean that right now we could get incredible sales on? Are they just trying to get rid of them or will they So it's funny them? you might think so, but I think most people are probably trying to buy them up because they want the incandescent lights. Mm -hmm. Yes. Right? Because LED is only what you're going to be, what you're going to have, you know, um, from now on, no more incandescent light. And if you like that soft incandescent light that you grew up with mm -hmm. all your life, right? Yeah. True. Then people are buying them and hoarding them. It's interesting. interesting. So, because I want to go to like, I don't know, like a Lowe's or Home Depot and see, are they crazy cut down on price right now because they're mm. trying to dump their All the, inventory? Mm. Well, they and, and it's true, they're not going to be able to sell them, so maybe so. But I'm I'm guessing that a lot of them have run the course anyway Probably. because, you know, they knew that they were not going to be able to sell them after this. It's, it, there's a piece of me that's sad about this. I want to know the people who have hoarded them because I know that you've got a closet full that's just right. stocked <laughs> of incandescent lights. <laughs> and jumping over to um, Ledecky and, and with, with when, uh, swimming, I mean, congratulations to her. And you know, one of my favorite things to do when I'm on social media actually mm -hmm. is I actually love watching swimmers compete sometimes and I also love watching divers dive all the way mm -hmm. from kind of the top and do different tricks diving into the you water like the it just reminded things. me of things that I, I just like to, I, to do well I remember <laughs> Michael Phelps was sweeping the world back right. in those days now she's past him like I know and all I can say about that is go Gators <laughs> <laughs> You, you had to just kind of slide that one in there, you just right? <laughs> Pretty much. In there. Ooh, all like right. That. We'll be back. <laughs> <laughs> all right, let's talk about that forecast. You know what? This is the temperatures we can't really argue a whole lot with, right? Because we've seen those 95s. I'm, I'm done with that. And I'm sure you are too. 87 in Greensboro, 84 Reedsville. Um, some temperature differences in our higher elevations because we have seen a couple of scattered showers here or there. That low tonight will be down to about 64. Really comfortable. That's way better than those lower 70s we were seeing for a while. Mostly clear skies. Tomorrow, partly sunny and nice. Can't rule out and anytime this time of the year. Just know you're going to have at least a 20% chance of a late day shower or storm with a high temperature expected in the mid 80s tomorrow. A couple of showers now moving down from the northwest, so close to Martinsville, Virginia. Otherwise, we'll be in good shape. And just know that even in our seven day forecast, you see low to mid 80s almost across the board. Testing one, two, three, and we were able to walk through the school for the very first time a part of this multi million dollar. Yeah, I'm gonna That's because you. of me. 
<laughs> Mic check, one, two, three, three, two, one, one, two, three, three, two, one. I'm out here with Hannah. It's been a time. <laughs> <laughs> Really enjoy we need a couch. hanging out with Which Amber all day long. boyfriend's dad says that he's going to make one for us. <laughs> <laughs> we have interference. Yeah, 10987654321, Hey there, we are talking about pickleball and why it is the fastest growing. Tuck, tuck, that's the sound of the pickleball. Tuck, 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 tuck. Very loud. Why is that? Where's Miriam? You talk. Mic check, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. From the people that I have spoken with today, it is clear. Witnesses tell me the shooting took place right here in the parking lot of Freedom Park at 245. I had the privilege of attending the International Civil Rights Center and Museum Annual Gala last week, where they honored WFMI News 2's Sandra Hughes with the well-deserved Trailblazer Award. Between Sandra and all the other people recognized, I left so inspired. Just being in the same room as Sandra makes you up your game. She's got a way of bringing out the best in everyone, and boy did she do that. Her big message was, if you see something that you feel in your soul is wrong, speak up, act, because if you don't, who will? Then there was Greensboro Mayor Pro Tem Yvonne Johnson, who received the Lifetime Community Service Award. She shared her mantra that service is the rent we pay for living on this earth. And Reverend Dr. Bernard Lafayette, who was one of the last people to see Martin Luther King Jr. alive. He talked about how he tried to stay in the background, but King called him up to the forefront to help manage the movement. His advice is that when you're called up, listen. There's a reason someone is picking you to help lead. Seeing the people who've done so much for the community makes you realize what a debt we owe them all. And the best way to help repay them is to help carry the torch forward. That's my two cents. WFMY News 2 at 5 starts right now. The tragic death of